yeah, it's got that richness, but then it totally cleans everything out. This is so good. Just a big good. dead spot, and like we're all quiet at the same I, time. We're all, <laughs> we're all sort of pondering this wine. This is a, this is a thinking man's sort of dessert oh, wine. Oh, man, or like with like this little walnut tart or something like that. I'm just... Because this has enough acidity to clean out even, even, even desserts, I think. I was going to say, know, this easily this completely would be paired with desserts. Mm -hmm. um, just the right kind of not too high in sugar, but a beautiful, some sort of a, you know, a lot of Greek desserts would go great, like a pastry or a cookie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it's so fascinating, because it's not like the sugar isn't there. This isn't like a light, zippy dessert wine, but any stretch of the imagination, you've got the rich, dried fruits, it's full, but the acidity just clears it all out at the end, and, and, and it's, it's this fantastic. What's that appetizer that's like prosciutto wrapped something? Oh, like oh, dates. Uh, dates. Dates, yeah. yeah. Bacon that dates. This, right. The salt <laughs> Spot the on. Yeah, perfect. Would be awesome. Right. Spot on. Man, I... This, this is good. 94 points for me. I, I'm wow. very impressed. Very, okay. very impressed with this dessert wine. 93, I'm, I'm loving it. And this being, you know, not as popular a region, I'm guessing, you know, I'm I'm guessing that it's really affordable, and I'd, I'd put this up against forty, fifty dollars Sauternes Tokai like ports. This is right up in there, and I bet it's about half the price. And one thing they were saying, I read, uh, maybe I don't know, at least I read online, was that like top cuvées for this style of wine will age, be aged in barrel for up to twenty to twenty-five years. Wow. So this is considered a young one. It's not even like a top cuvée or even well, I mean, who knows, right? Um, but yeah. That's at least that's what. Call us out for wrong. Wikipedia like, told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wikipedia told me that. So, <laughs> uh, I do know these age, these wines age a lot. I don't know that the producers hold a lot of wine back uh, like they do in say you know ports. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's unusual. I think this would age awesome. I think they pretty much put them out. But yeah, they they uh, they recently <laughs> found some really the old killer. Greek dessert wines in some cellars uh, in you know in other countries, not in Greece. How old? Uh, like eighty years. Wow. And they they found two, and one of them. Uh, Held up, it was amazing. They said it was just incredible. The other one had, you know, kind of fallen off and wasn't, but nothing wrong with it. it just kind of lost all its fruit and, right. and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so absolutely, very, very age worthy. I haven't seen any age wines even available on the island, so I don't know that they do a lot of that, you know, library wine sort of scenario. But mm. I, I think it's super age worthy. Yeah, go ahead. So, so something that's making me nervous here, here too, like on the importer label, it says like. This is just a sample, not for resale. So I'm wondering if it's even currently imported to the American market or if they're just trying to promote it to make it happen. So if it's not, if you're an importer, if you're a wholesaler, look this stuff up and bring it into the United States, please. Because um, I certainly haven't seen it on shelves in the Portland area. And yeah, I, I'm looking to buy some. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. super nice. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit lower. Sure. I think it's 91 points. Sure. Which is very, very solid. It's, it's definitely one of the higher scores I've been to given to a dessert wine. Uh, I'd love to see what it does over time with some age. Uh, yeah. If I could change anything, I'd just lower the sugar just like half a step. Okay. And it would be like the perfect wine. Which, yeah, which, yeah, make, makes good sense. And again, with that acidity, I think that really would contribute well to its ageability. That wine's really got like two best. characteristics. I mean, it's two characters almost in the same yeah. wine. It's two different wines almost. It's crazy. I'm going to do a little dessert rinse here. This poor guy is in a tough spot. I would not like to be making <laughs> the dessert wine to follow that up in a tasting. Maybe we should have started with that. So, so wine number three, what, Vincenzo del Chianti Classico. Grant's traveled a lot to Italy as well, so his pronunciation's going to be way better. Uh, he brought in Castello di Cabrolio. All right. Okay. See, so you got the cool BR thing. I can never fill it on that. <laughs> a little bit of credit. You need a rinse? Too? Uh, I got it. Fill me up. All right. Taste. Yeah, I, I'm expecting this to be a little bit lighter. Sure. And so I think you're right. We probably should have. Uh, What's the vintage? Oh, 2000. Are these 100 percent Sandro Mason? Uh, I would think, but I don't know. Well, if you have sure. the doesn't have to be. I, I, I think so. I'm not. 80, 80 I'm not percent, at least. That yeah. sounds right to me, but I'm not. I'm not all over time. It sounds right to you, right? Paul I Sandra. think so. Yes. Sure. Okay. So. We'll go with that. It's probably all Sandro Mason. Definitely lighter in color. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're wrong, don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just let us know in the comments. Correct us again. We're we're trying to build a community that all let's talk about. Let's talk about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a ooh, that's a, a chemical varnish. I think. Bingo. 
Yeah, yeah it's not say, as mealy or something. Yeah, it's more like a varnish. Not as mealy, as immediately delicious as the previous wine. Ooh, but apricot stuff going on. A little more. Mm. Like some caramel. That's what I go with them. Varnish and then like fresher fruits, not particularly like heavily dried fruit or anything like that. This is a little. Do you know if it's Italian Pensanto Drive as well, or is that just a... a uh, I, I don't know how these wines are. Okay. I, I only know from the Veneto that sure. we talked about already, so I, I can't tell you. Yeah, I don't have any. Let us know. Again, comments. Educate us. Educate the other I think oranges are coming through on this, again, pretty pretty well. Mm, yeah. Maybe they're all. Oh. Orange scents, or like even orange peel, orange zest. Do you get almonds at all? Yeah, there's something nutty there. Well, like the as as it's in the glass, even like the varnish is kind of evolving into something a little more earthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of hoping to, to get past that. I'm having a hard time with the varnish right now. That is really dominating. Uh, so working on that. I yeah, think like walnuts and almonds. There's an edge there that's just barely past the varnish, but the varnish thing like that jumping out right at the start definitely makes it a little harder to get past. Mm. That said, it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell particularly bad or anything. And it yeah, it delivers on the palate too. A little, little bit of that varnish, a little bit of like younger walnut, right? Like the, yeah. like the little, little, a little green. Yeah, just a <laughs> little bit of bitterness. Not that, that I would say this is a bitter wine by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but there's like that dark walnut flavor with just an edge to it. The acidity on this is massive. And it goes across the oh, top totally. of my tongue just in a wave. That said, almost a little strong mm -hmm. for me. It's not balanced to the wine at all. I get a lot of heat on this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely out of balance. Um, I, I hate to say it, I, I love Tuscany. I love Italian wines. I love Tuscan wines. And I'm having a tough time with this one. Not a whole lot of excitement here, here. either. Yeah, the, the, the heat kind of sticks around. The heat does stick around. I'm getting a nice streak of vanilla right down the middle of my palate. Um, that said, though, this is more in the sugar range that I think you probably want in your dessert wines, right? I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that part. This is this is less sweet than mm -hmm. than the previous wine. Yep, and and the acidity is there from beginning to end, mm -hmm. just not in balance. Yeah, there's that that, and I, I, I'm gonna attribute it to the alcohol, like that kind of like like varnish texture, or whatever. I think there's just a little bit of a little bit of alcohol that's just not in balance and a little, little awkward with the rest of the flavors. Are some good flavors there, but it kind of detracts from it. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sensing a typical wine flaw. Like it's not cork, it's mm -hmm. not. No, no, no. I don't get any of that. I mean, there's eighty-two points. You know, kind of some nice flavors going on. If you know, if I was poured this out of dinner or something like that, or if I was drinking it with friends, sure, I could drink through it, no problem. Would I wish I was drinking something else? Probably. You know, would I drink this bottle from the bottom before I started in on this one? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> 82 points for me as well. It's exactly what I was, my mind was resting on. Uh, too many flaws. I mean, it's still tasty, right? And, and yeah. by no question, we'd sit here and drink it. Yeah. If that's all we had, sort of, to drink. But uh, you know, something I would ever buy. Really. Yeah. I'm gonna go with this is the uh, unrated version. All right. Fair enough. All, all right. right. So, so a great showing from Santorini. I'm certainly excited to try more mm -hmm. of the original Vinsanto. Um, Oh, a little bit of the, the name there. I didn't talk about that at all, right? right. So, like, why why are they both called Vinsanto? So, originally, this is called Vinsanto because it's Vin de Santorini. Um, but, you know, wine from wine, wine from Santorini. Um, and, I don't know, why did the Italians pick so, it up again? So, here's my understanding, although I don't yeah. think you'd find two people would agree on the history here. But, my general, this is what I think. Uh, in, like, going back B.C., the Greeks, the, actually Crete, was the wines of Europe. The Mediterranean wines all came originally. The Minoans, they were the original winos. Mm -hmm. nice. And from there it spread through uh, to Italy, to France, all throughout Europe. Thanks, right? Minoans. So there's, yeah, exactly. So there's this great history of that. They were the traders, they were the, they were on the trade route, they were made the first wine in the Mediterranean, and it spread from there. Now that's not to say they weren't already grapes elsewhere, but winemaking perspective. And then what happened is they brought some of those and they, they there was grafting, there was genetic changes, they call it there. That, and, but, so, you know, thousands of years, things change, right? So, yeah, 
Santorini was making the first dessert wines probably in, uh, in before Italy. Mm -hmm. But then you have the other thing happened where the, uh, where the Venetians and controlled that whole region of the world and they exported things including their names and so now we have oh. what is clearly an Italian name, Vincento, there's nothing Greek about that whatsoever, which is where they get the name with a slight modification on Santorini. In fact, the name of Santorini is clearly not Greek. Uh, the original name is Thera. Uh, so yeah, Santorini, awesome. uh, which comes from the word uh, Santa Irini, Saint Irini. Uh, so you've got this whole thing where the different times between Alexander the Great, you got the Roman Empire, you got the Venetian Empire, you got everybody was conquering everybody, and they all had influences in different directions and different times in history. Absolutely. And so it's really difficult to like unravel all that and say exactly who named what and who did what first. These are two completely different grape varietals, uh, same name, and so it has to do with all Italian influence overlapping back and forth. Yeah, That's exactly. really cool. Yeah, cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I also want to make a point. Grant's wearing his white rose shirt today. I want to say thanks. They've treated us well on a couple tasting trips recently. They make some solid wine, so we'll give we'll give them a thumbs up on the show today. And uh, and, and wrapping things up, that also leaves uh, Grant to ask you guys a question to answer in the comments. So, again, show the guests some love. Come on. So, my question today is this. The Greek wine industry, like most of Europe, is, uh, is has changed over the last 20 years, okay? 20, 30 years, where they put much more emphasis on quality. I mean, Chianti has changed radically. A lot of the wines in France, too, has changed radically from what they were 30 years ago. And Greeks are way behind in in from other parts of Europe, and there's a, there's a historical reason for that, and we talk about that on another show. But uh, so my question is, the Greek wines are emerging. We're starting to see some of that today. Uh, what are the future regions of Greece which are going to dominate? At, at least the Greek wine industry, right? There's a a good dozen primary wine regions in Greece. Santorini is one of them. In the future, once they come up and are a little more have a little more international recognition. Which wine regions are going to be the, the Bordeaux's and the Piemontes and the Burgundies? They're going to have an edge on price as they come up, too, right? As, right. They, as they start to explore, exactly. they're going to be coming into the market for it's a great 20 money. $25. Yeah. Right. So, those of you in the industry, those of you who import, those of you who sell wine, those of you who make wine, who really nerd out, mm -hmm. make Let your call. Know. Document it right now. Get out in front and document your prediction for what Greek wine regions are going to, are going to dominate in the future. Right. Absolutely. I'll be buying. Sweet. That's an awesome yeah. question. Thanks for watching, guys. See you for episode 60. Bye.